Hello, and welcome to ATP Report. I'm Barry Nussbaum. Our very special honored guest today is Danny Ayalon, direct from Israel. He is the former Israeli ambassador to the United States, formerly at the United Nations, formerly uh, with the delegation in Panama. He's the former deputy foreign minister of Israel, former member of Knesset, and the founder of The Truth About Israel. Welcome, my friend, Danny. Thank you, Barry. It's always a real joy and a real privilege to be with you and with ATP. Great job. Thank you so much. Let's talk about the tremendous, almost unbelievable changes that are coming out of Washington vis-a-vis -vis Israel and Iran. And let's start with Robert Malley. He's President Biden's new Middle East envoy. And in my opinion, he couldn't be a worse choice because there's going to be drastic changes in U.S. policy regarding Iran and Israel. Um, I guess you would say he is realigning things towards Iran and away from America's allies in the Middle East, specifically the Gulf states and Israel. Um, from what we're hearing, he wants to downgrade the importance of the Abraham Accords, and he literally doesn't want the Houthi rebels called terrorists anymore, even while they're launching missiles into Saudi Arabia. He doesn't think he wants the Taylor Force Act anymore, and on and on and on. I know you know him. What can you tell us about Robert Malley? Well, I know that uh, he is a son of uh, his parents. His, I think his mother is a... Um, a Jewish woman from Egypt. Uh, he's been an old hand uh, with the Middle East uh, and Middle Eastern politics and studies. He was in some think tanks. I uh, knew him uh, first when he served at the uh, Clinton uh, administration. At the uh, second Clinton administration, I met him a few times when he had, he was in charge of the Middle East portfolio of the National Security Council of the United States. This is how I know him. I can tell you we, we didn't see much eye to eye. And um, I am, am still, until now, I am quite uh, concerned about his views. And I'm not really sure I understand how someone who knows the Middle East so well can misread uh, in such a, uh, a blunt and I would say almost a dangerous way misreading the entire geopolitical concerns and the real interests of the United States, which are the interests of Israel. And for that matter, the entire free world. Well, he's on board and I don't think he's going anywhere. Uh, speaking of realignments, um, a few days ago, the United States announced that it's gonna lift the sanctions it imposed on the International Criminal Court in The Hague. Uh, the Biden administration basically canceled what Trump did, which was saying that the ICC ought to be financially isolated for their bizarre focus, if not obsession, on Israel's, quote, war crimes, unquote. Um, the ICC also wants to investigate American soldiers in Afghanistan. They're chasing around Israel. Look, the ICC has no control over Israel and the United States because neither country is a member of the organization. And yet, at the insistence of the Palestinian Authority, the ICC is coming after Israel yet again. Will Israel be effective in blocking it? I hope so. Uh, you, you are quite right. Both the United States and Israel have not reaffirmed uh, the induction to this ICC, which uh, is becoming more and more like a uh, kangaroo court, uh, quite frankly. Uh, the ICC, you know, we came out of a very lofty idea to um, pursue and uh, prosecute uh, real um, criminals who are charged with the war crimes or crimes against uh, humanity, uh, the type of, uh, I, I would say the typecast would be Nazis, would be ISIS, would be Al-Qaeda, would be Hezbollah, would be the Ayatollahs of Iran, anyone who really seeks uh, um, 
uh, destruction and death. But instead of that, they are pursuing those who are really standing for really human rights, for democracy, for liberty, for justice. So really we see here an upside down world. Now, of course, Israel will not allow the, the, the ICC to um, uh, frame and incriminate us, uh, nor to intervene in our um, policies and our strategic uh, decisions. The ICC, which is supposedly a, uh, a tribunal of justice, has become a political, uh, a political instrument which is being manipulated by terrorists, whether it's the Hamas or anyone else. So again, we see here that the idea behind creating the uh, ICC the, was good, but the implementation is just 180 degrees from the, uh, uh, the vision of its founders. And there's one more issue here specifically with the Palestinians, since they are not a state, they have no uh, uh, standing whatsoever in the ICC. So what the ICC is doing by considering on its own uh, uh, decision, which they have no mandate for, deciding to take the case, that means they look at the, at the Palestinians as a state, they are taking uh, uh, sides, political sides, in a very, very um, coarse way, which, um, on the one hand, uh, will stiffen Israel's position vis-a-vis -vis the ICC, and also I think it will undermine its legitimacy. Well, you know, there's another reversal that's going on right now um, in regards to policy that's going to affect Israel, and that is the Biden administration is aggressively and very rapidly restoring huge financial support to the Palestinian Authority. Um, Trump made a very profound statement after his meeting uh, with Mahmoud Abbas at the White House, where he said, cut off the terror support, cut off the pay for slay program where you pay um, basically terrorists to kill Israeli Jews, or I'm going to cut off the money. Abbas didn't, so Trump did it. And profoundly changing that policy is a disaster for Israel. Biden just started giving him money. And what did he get in return? Absolutely nothing. And not only is he giving money to the PA, but he's restoring funding to the United Nations Relief and Works Agency, UNRWA, who is running schools that promote terrorism, hatred of Jews, anti-Semitism, and so on. As I see it, Danny, Biden's new policy, giving them money in exchange for nothing, is going to do nothing other than support terrorism. What are your thoughts? Well, first off, uh, Barry, I don't know how the U.S. administration can go around uh, a, a, an American bill, law, which was signed into law, uh, overwhelmingly uh, voted in by uh, both uh, houses and uh, with the, also with the bipartisan uh, support, Democrats and Republicans alike. So you mean I the Taylor Force Act? Yes, this is the Taylor Force. So I don't know how you can go around the Taylor Force Act. With UNRWA, this is also uh, unfortunate because uh, UNRWA uh, is the most obsolete, anachronistic, and um, dangerous organization. It, uh, you know, throughout its uh, 70 years or more of existence, it has not done good to one refugee. You know, the, uh, so, you know the, the, the Palestinians, for some reason, well, we know the reason, it's a political reason, they have their own private refugee agency, UNRWA, where the UNHCR, uh, which is the United Nations uh, Refugee uh, um, Agency, they take care of all refugees in the world, tens of millions. Here you are, one dedicated, especially dedicated uh, organization to only the refugees, you know, which again, the numbers are inflated. Let's say their numbers are right. Five, six million uh, refugees are treated by one agency. Now, on top of that, not only that they were not uh, efficient, they got really fulfilling the job, uh, also they are inciting 
because they are in charge for some reason of the curriculum of Palestinian schools in Gaza and other refugee camps in uh, Judea and Samaria, AKA the West Bank. And in this curriculum, there is an incitement against the very existence of the state of Israel. Uh, quite a few employees um, and, and some of them we have charged with uh, abetting and aiding to terrorism. And um, it's, it's really a, a, a hindrance uh, to peace. So the whole um, treatment uh, towards the Palestinians by the UN and international organizations should have been again uh, going under a very, very uh, thorough uh, reform uh, in order to really become efficient and also to become an honest organization, not taking sides and dedicated to the mission of alleviating the, uh, the, the misery of the Palestinians refugees who are suffering because of the wrong decisions and intransigence and the belligerence of Palestinian leaders for generations now. Well said, nice history lesson, and it's all true. Thanks for coming on today, Danny. Uh, I encourage all of our viewers around the world to check out The Truth About Israel. You'll find out more of what Danny Ayalon thinks from his lofty position of being one of the most experienced diplomats in Israel's recent history. And for those of you uh, who have not yet signed up for our text message alert system, please do so by taking out your cell phone, sorry, only in the United States, and texting the word TRUTH and sending it to the number 88202, push send, you'll be signed up for free. You'll get all of our content from Danny and me and everybody else in the palm of your hand. And like I said, it's always for free. For Ambassador I alone, I'm Barry Nussbaum. Thanks for joining us on ATP Report.